A question that is difficult to answer is why was Newton so opposed to Cartesian mathematical methods? He was a Cartesian mathematician. I mean, in his youth, he made his discoveries by reading Descartes' geometry and the notes to, the, to Descartes' geometry. Now here, the historian has to be very cautious because uh, it would be excessive to say that Newton rejected Cartesian style, algebraic thinking, uh, the method of series and fluxions that was based on algebra, uh, on the idea that curves are represented by equations. But, but um, I think that it can be said that Newton came to consider these algebraic methods as heuristic methods, as methods that can be used uh, as tools of discovery. Um, there is a memorandum that Newton, uh, that David Gregory, one of Newton's acolytes, uh, wrote after meeting Newton. Uh, uh, Newton's acolytes had this, uh, often this uh, habit of, uh, especially David Gregory, of uh, writing the, 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 the ipsissima verba of, of the great master, the, 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 the words that Newton had uh, uttered in front of them. And uh, in one of these memoranda, David Gregory writes, according to Newton, algebra is fit enough to find out, but entirely unfit to publish and to consign to posterity. So algebra is uh, a tool that you can use, but it is a tool that is not um, fit for being published. It is a tool of discovery. So it's excessive to say that Newton rejected Cartesian algebra. Uh, he downgraded Cartesian algebra and he valued much more geometry. Why? First reason. Newton hated Descartes. He considered Descartes a philosopher who had opened the door to a dangerous philosophy from a religious point of view. Second, Newton hated Descartes because Descartes in the geometry, and uh, Newton had a very skewed image of Descartes. Uh, Newton uh, was, uh, so to speak, a bad Cartesian scholar, so to speak. But in the geometry, uh, Descartes says that uh, his method is superior to those of the ancients, and this for Newton was unacceptable, unacceptable. Uh, Newton valued greatly the, um, the, the fact that um, sources are ancient. The farther you go back in the time, the better for him. And uh, in a certain measure, this holds also for mathematics. I don't mean that Newton thought that the ancients uh, had uh, the binomial theorem, for instance, or had uh, uh, advanced into mathematics as he had done. Quite the contrary, there are uh, manuscripts in which Newton recognizes that mathematics has, has made important progress in his age. But for him, the ancients were right as far as the method they were employing, which was geometrical, not algebraic. Now, what is good in geometry? One thing is that a geometer never loses sight about the objects that he is considering. An algebraist is dealing with symbols to which it is, it was impossible to attribute a meaning. For instance, the square root 
of a negative number. What is that? Nowadays, after Argon, Gauss, Wessel, we know how to interpret geometrically the square root of negative numbers. But in Newton's times, these were just weird symbols. And um, a mathematician who is dealing with these symbols is doing something absurd. He is uh, manipulating symbols which have no meaning. So one reason why um, Newton was uh, so interested in recovering geometrical thinking, going against the trend of mathematics in his age to which he had so much contributed is that uh, geometry provides uh, a language which is endowed with content, I would say. And Newton says this, when we conceive uh, magnitudes as generated in time, when we conceive the objects to which we devote our attention as mathematicians as geometrical objects which exists in time and place, uh, we are talking about things that exist in rerum natura. We are talking about objects uh, that have an existence. Then in other parts of his work, Newton refers to the fact that these objects are visible to the eye. Therefore, there is also an interest in visualization. Another reason why Newton was interested in geometry is that uh, in solving geometrically Pappus' problem, he developed an interesting idea in projective geometry. Now, projective geometry is a very serious thing, and uh, uh, Newton began to contribute new results in this field. This field was practiced in, on the continent by Desargues, Pascal, and Philippe de la Hire, whose work, the work of this last mathematician, Newton knew and cited. So Newton had the impression that uh, in his age, yes, everybody was crazy about Cartesian algebra, William Altred, and uh, uh, and everybody was crazy about uh, extension of Cartesian algebra to a new symbolical tool such as infinite series. Newton was a master, one of the best uh, mathematicians <laughs> in the field of infinite series. But he had, uh, the, he had proof that uh, there, were, there was a minority of mathematicians who were pursuing a different research project. Uh, that is uh, projective geometry. In this field, in the field of geometry, <coughs> in the 1670s, late 1670s, early 1680s, Newton developed also not only projective geometry, but also an approach to the method of fluxion based on geometrical limits. He conceived the idea that one could get rid of these infinitesimals by means of limiting procedures. And he uh, developed several uh, results uh, on what he called the method of first and last ratios of vanishing magnitudes. This method was published in section one, book one of the Principia. Um, so these ideas were not new with Newton, of course. These ideas, the idea of basing infinitesimals on limits procedures, were ideas that were quite widespread <coughs> in Newton's times. Uh, but Newton gave a decisive uh, um, contribution to this um, more rigorous uh, approach to, uh, to the method of fluxions. What is surprising, what might surprise you, is the fact that uh, Newton didn't know that, that his, R, th 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 this, uh, that his enemy, 
uh, Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz was developing ideas that in a way were very similar to his. Uh, that is, um, uh, in 1675, more or less in the same years in which Newton was embarked into this project of eliminating infinitesimals, Leibniz was doing very much the same thing in a manuscript that has been published recently uh, on the quadrature of conic sections. <coughs> and in this uh, manuscript, you see Leibniz doing uh, quadratures, avoiding carefully infinitesimals. <laughs>